Ladies and gentlemen, you are watching the English Nhật Bung Phước radio, television station and newspaper. I'm Hưng Kek and now on the headline at Yusha. Bung Phước leader issue ultimatum on traffic projects. Electronic contracts, a new direction for business in Bung Phước province. Prime Minister begins office of visit to Singapore. Indian professor highlight Vietnam impressive growth. Đà Nẵng consider earlier year-round destination for Malaysians. Chairwoman of the Bình Phước Provincial People Committee Trần Tuệ Hiền has called on the construction units of the project upgrading the section of National Road No. 741 from Thác Mè Bridge to National Highway No. 14C in the border district of Buyamup to complex work within the two next months. Under planning, the project was to be completed in 2022 after beginning in 2018. It remains unfinished, however, due to slow construction progress, which has badly affected local transport. The project contractor said two stretches of the route are located in areas with complex terrain, while the scale of construction is significant. The construction schedule was extended as a result. Inspecting the construction site, Chair Kumin Hien requested that the contractor concentrated maximum human resources and machinery on finishing the project. If it can't be completed within two months, the province would pay for work completed and terminate the contract. According to the Binh Phuc branch of State Banks of Vietnam, total mobile capital in the province at of the end of January is estimated at 53,500 billion, up 1.45% compared to the same period slot year. Deposits in Vietnam Dong accounted for 98.69% and in foreign currencies 1.31%. Savings accounts accounted for 58.11%, payment deposits 40.22%, and the issuance of valuable papers 1.66%. The credit balance was estimated at 108,200 billion dong of 0.99% against the same period in 2022. Short-term loans accounted for 74.55% and medium and long-term loans 25.45%. Loans in Vietnam dong accounted for 93.99% and loans in foreign currencies at 6.01%. Credit institutions in the province implemented effective credit growth solutions in parallel with credit quality control. As a result, bad debts accounted only for 0.48% of total outstanding loans. In general, deposits and lending interest rates are tending to rise, especially in the context of the State Bank of Vietnam increasing operating interest rates on two occasions. Compared to the end of last year, the average local deposit interest rate has risen 1.19% per annum and the average lending interest rate 1.21%. Electronic contracts are being introduced by many businesses to replace traditional paper contracts, as they have set time and transaction costs. They also make data exchange and information sharing more straightforward. Electronic attacks are transactions performed via electronic means, cloud computing technology, and digital technology. Their widespread application is essential, helping businesses and customers save time and money, especially on cross-border transactions. With electronic contracts, businesses can also assess, transact, and exchange information with many partners at the same time. With traditional contracts, businesses usually take three to five working days and must spend time and money on printing, storing, and transporting, as well as on staff. With electronic contracts, meanwhile, only a few minutes is needed for submission and signing, and staff involvement is minimal. The option of simultaneously signing many contracts also helps businesses speed up the agreement process, save costs, and improve production and business efficiency. As Bing Phuc's business community becomes stronger, the trend of using electronic contracts has been on the rise. 
telecommunications businesses are taking advantage of this trend to increase customer numbers. Using electronic contracts to fully replace traditional contracts is a stepping stone for businesses to keep pace with global digital transformation. Now let a look at the top story of other country. Ladies and gentlemen, Prime Minister Phan Minh Chính, his power and high-ranking delegation of Vietnam began an official visit to Singapore on February the 8th. Welcoming the Vietnamese delegation at the airport included Singaporean Minister for Manpower and Second Minister for Trade and Industry, Deng Xialiang, Singaporean Ambassador to Vietnam, Jaya Ratnam, Vietnamese Ambassador to Singapore, Mai Phuc Sung, officials from the Vietnamese Embassy, and a number of overseas Vietnamese in the country. The visit is taking place at a time when the Vietnam-Singapore strategic partnership is developing strongly and dynamically across all fields. This year, the two countries are celebrating the 50th founding anniversary of diplomatic relations and 10 years of their strategic partnership. The two nations have regularly and effectively maintained high and low-level delegation exchanges and meetings, along with expanding defense and security cooperation. Collaboration in other areas such as education, culture and tourism has also been bolstered through specific agreements and memorandum of understanding. National flag carrier Vietnam Airlines will resume five more routes between Vietnam and China in March and April, meaning nine out of yet ten routes to the destination are back to operation after the pandemic. In March, its flights between Hanoi and Beijing will resume with a frequency of three flights a week. Meanwhile, a carrier will increase the weekly frequency of flights linking Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh City of Vietnam to Guangzhou and Shanghai of China to four from the current one to two flights. In April, Vietnam Airlines will reopen four routes between Da Nang and China's Guangzhou, Shanghai and Chengdu, as well as between Hanoi and Chengdu. The roads will open two flights a week to provide service between the two communities. In addition, from September, the airline plans to operate the wide-body aircraft Airbus A350 and Boeing 787 on its roads between Hanoi and Beijing, and between Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh City and Shanghai. A recent article published on the website moderndiplomacy.eu has highlighted prospects of Vietnam's economic growth. According to Professor Pankaj Jua, the economic growth of Vietnam has been accelerating, and the agricultural sector has been productive in ensuring food security for Vietnamese citizens. This sector also earned valuable foreign exchange of more than 48 billion US dollars, the Indian professor added. One of the interesting achievements of Vietnam has been increasing life expectancy, and its universal health coverage which covers more than 87% of the population, he said. The professor said the Vietnamese population is also young, and is adapting itself for digital economy and building core fundamentals for its membership in different regional economic organizations. Vietnam's inward foreign direct investment has also been doing quite well, and it has received over 27.7 billion US dollars last year, he continued. According to the professor, Vietnam's impressive growth is attributable to trade liberalization, increased deregulation, and improvement in the ease of doing business, investment in human resources, and stable government. Malaysia Media has named Da Nang an ideal year-round destination for Malaysian tourists for its many attractions such as endless beautiful beaches, temple, and lively night markets. In a recent article on the New State Time, Alan Tess Lim Seng said that coming to the central Vietnamese city in February it will offer visitors a more relaxing and less noisy atmosphere compared to other times of the year. Besides the weather, this time is cooler with certain genes. The author also introduced a three of Da Nang popular tourist destinations including Banna Hills, the Golden Bridge, Sheng Cha Peninsula, Linung Pagoda, and Cham Museum. Oyans, a unique recognized world cultural heritage in the neighboring central province of Quảng Nam, were also mentioned. 
The other asserted that the chip cannot be complete without famous Vietnamese dishes such as the beef noodle soup, hoi an chicken rice, and traditional cakes. At the end of the article, the author said, "I resolve to return again to Vietnam in the near future and visit each other city, which hope that they will be just and exciting at Da Nang." And that all for today on BPTV News. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.